All right, let's take a look at 1 through 11. Is there any of those you would like me to try to work out for you? Oh, wait, can you do number 12, please? Go ahead. Four. Four? Oh, okay. Couple of you are off task. Let's settle down, please. Reese, which one did you say? Twelve. Twelve. Twelve, sir. Thanks for listening to directions one through eleven, but we'll get there. No, I asked was there questions from one through eleven. Oh. All right, let's work these three first, see how we do. Um, again, if you recall, we are multiplying them together. Sometimes we're distributing, sometimes we're distributing a little bit uh, more. So this first one, if I distribute here to here and here to here, I get x squared times 2x, which is 2x to the third, because remember that's x to the first. And then the uh, minus sign comes along to the right, x squared times 1 is just x squared. It's in descending order, we're all done. Okay. Oh, did I already say problem twice? Yeah. Oh. I don't know how I did that. All right, let me strike through this real quick, and I'll write the appropriate question. Uh, let's see, 2x to the third, 3x plus 2. Same thing, I'm going to distribute over the parentheses 2x to the third. So if I multiply these together, the 2 and the 3 multiply to give me 6. x to the third, x to the first is x to the fourth. And then I multiply here and here, so I get plus 4x to the third. Again, it's in descending order. You cannot add them together because you have different exponents. And then number 12, we need to start multiplying. So the 6x is going to multiply to here to here and from here to here first. And so that's going to give me 12x to the second. And then 6x minus 18xy. And then I'm going to multiply the negative 5y here and 5y here. So negative 5y times 2x is negative 10xy or 10yx, which is the same thing. And then negative 5y times negative 3y is positive 15y squared. Okay? Combine any like terms. Remember, x times y, y times x means the same thing. So this is going to combine with this. So I'm going to get uh, 12x squared minus 28xy plus 15y squared. Cool? May I clear that off? What other questions do we have up to on just the first page, up to 17? 36. Okay, good. What else we got? Yeah. 16? One more from that front page. Top problem, I'm going to take 2x multiplied here and here and here. So that's going to give me 6x to the third plus 4x squared minus 8x. And then I take the negative 5 here, here, and here. Don't forget the negative. So that's going to give me negative 15x squared minus 10x plus 20. Okay? Uh, combine like terms, there's nothing else to the third power, so bring it down. Combine those together, it gives me negative 11x squared. Combine that, it gives me negative 18x. And then the plus 20 is brought down. It is in standard form because it's descending order. And then number 13, we're just going to multiply it together. So the 3x goes here and here and here and here. So that gives me 3x to the third plus 3x. Multiply here and here, that gives me negative 2x squared minus 2. Is it in standard form as it sits? No, why not, Megan? 
Yeah, let's flip flop these two. Okay, so let's put it in descending order. Now nah, there's your correct answer. You have it in standard form. Again, you want descending order, that's important. Now, I know some of you are amazed that we had a backside to this. Got the digit, flip the page over. But hey, let's take a look at the backside and what kind of questions we might have come across there if we had applied to it. Don't blend it. Should I do 18 and 19 both? Finding the area. Okay, problem number 18. The area of a rectangle is what? What's the area of a rectangle? What's the equation to find the area of a rectangle? Yeah. Length times width. Length times width. What's the formula to find the area of a triangle? One half times base times height. Good. And a lot of people will say, well, what's the difference between length and width and base and height? Really nothing. You just have to make sure that when you're talking about a triangle, you're multiplying two things that are perpendicular to each other. That's the base and height. Okay? All right, so the length on number 18, they're telling us is 2x plus 7. The width, they're telling us is x minus 2. So if we FOIL these together, we're going to get 2x squared minus 2x, multiply those, combine like terms, and that would be your area of the rectangle in relationship as a polygon. Uh, one half is going to come along for the right, so the base happens to be 4x minus 2. The height happens to be x plus 2, so that one half is going to come down. So FOIL first, so multiply here, multiply here. So I'm going to get one half coming along, so I get uh, 4x squared uh, plus 8x minus 2x minus 4. Combine your like terms inside first before you distribute. And then multiply everything by half. So I get 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. That would be the area of a triangle with the relationship to the uh, polynomials. 21, or 20, 21, 22, 23. Number 20, drop the parentheses. Because you're just adding them, right? Combine like terms. So the answer to number 20 would be 3x to the third plus 5x squared plus x minus 3. You're just dropping the parentheses, combining like terms. That's all you're doing. Uh, 21, we can drop the parentheses, but the parentheses on the right, I have to distribute that negative. So the x squared plus y squared, drop those parentheses, and then you get plus x squared minus y squared. And that would come up to an answer of 2x squared, and the y squareds cancel each other out. And then I'll do 22. 22 got a little goofy. So I'm just going to drop the parentheses. Look what I have done. signs opposite of what they had been written? Why are those signs up there opposite of down below? Good. I distributed the negative. I can drop the parentheses on both of these because they are both being added together. So now I'm going to combine like terms. So any thirds? Nope. That's it. Then I have this one, this one, and this one. So I'm going to combine those together. So negative 3x squared plus 6x squared is 3x squared, and then 3x squared added to negative 11x squared is negative 8x squared. Okay, so 3, negative 3 plus 6 is 3, minus 11 is negative 8. And then I have this and this to combine together, so I'm going to get plus 19x. And then 
And then I look at my constant terms. 2 minus 4 plus 3. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Plus 3 is positive 1. And there's answer 22. And then 23. I'm just going to drop the parentheses, change any signs if needed. This sign here and this sign here are opposite of what they had been because I had to distribute the negative over. Now I'm going to combine like terms. Looks like x to the fourth is my highest exponent. So I have 3x to the fourth. Remember, there's a 1 sitting there. And then I get uh, this one and this one to combine. So that gives me plus 4x to the third. And this one and this one, I get uh, plus 2x squared. And that's it. Good to go? Happy? Sad? Scared? That uh, packet I handed out to you. Um, so the very front page, second page, and the third page are the notes that we had done yesterday. Okay? Does that make sense? So the video is actually only three minutes long because unfortunately I don't know why it didn't record so I had to I taught it quickly to myself. There was kids walking by during passing period who were like, dude, what's wrong with that guy? He's still teaching there's no class there. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so that's what we had. So let's uh let's flip it over to the very, very back side. So if you wanted, if you need, if you would like to fill out that, all of the things are filled out completely. And let's go from there. I like eggs and bacon. All right, so the notes that I will show you to you all today. Okay, so let's go through and take a look at the warm up. Go through and talk about the warm up. Okay. last chapter. How do I approach problem number one? What am I trying to do to problem number one? Ray, what do you think? Yeah, eliminate. What would be good to do to eliminate one of the values? By negative two or positive two? Positive two because it's already negative, so I'm going to distribute that here, here, and here. That gives me so this one's coming along for the ride, so this one's staying as is. So let's bring this one down. So I get uh, negative 4x minus 2y equals negative 2. So I'm going to add those two together now. So that gives me negative x. That's, those are gone. Equals 2. So that gives me x is equal to negative 2. So my first answer is negative 2. I'm looking for a y value now, correct? Okay, hey, Sophia. If I wanted to find a y value, where should I plug that negative 2 in? Is it the top equation or the bottom equation? Your choice. Top, okay. So I plug negative 2 in for that. That's going to give me 4 minus y equals negative 1. Agree? Kristen, head down to the nurse, please. Take your stuff. Okay, so is everyone okay with me plugging that negative 2? I get negative 2 times negative 2, that's positive 4, minus y equals 1, so I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. That cancels negative y equals negative 5. What's y equal to then? Anybody? 5. So there's my answer. Hey, let me ask you this. If I had graphed these two lines, would they have been parallel? No, why not, Casey? Okay, 
But what's ha what happened with my answer to indicate that they're not parallel? I'm assuming. What do you got, Reese? You got it. I was going to say, since they both have negatives, wouldn't that be the most positive? No, no. I'm, what do we know about if they're parallel? We get a weird answer, don't we? We get like 19 cubed and 0, right? But I got an answer. So I have an x and y. I got a point up here, right? So being I got a point, we have an answer. So that tells us right away they're not parallel to each other. Is that right? If it was, it could be a positive point. Yeah, because negative y equals negative 5. So you multiply both sides by negative. Okay, cool. Sweet. All right. Casey, we're looking at number 2. I think they're set up to do elimination. I think maybe we should get rid of the x's. The only reason I'm saying let's get rid of the x's is I already have a negative x up there. Is that it? Okay. What is the smallest number that both 2 and 5 would go into? 10. So what should I multiply the whole top equation by? No, no, we don't have to worry about any negatives because we have opposite signs there, right? I like it. Okay, so I'm going to multiply everything there by 5. What would I have to multiply the whole bottom one by to get 2? Good. That makes sense why we don't have to worry about any negatives, everybody? We don't have, or we already have one of our, our x's being negative. So if I distribute on top, that gives me, what, 10x plus 15y is equal to 90. And then that gives me negative 10x minus 14y equals 26. Add these together, I get y equals, uh-oh. What? Not what? What? Where'd you get negative 1? I don't know. I, I don't know why I did that. That should be positive. So that'd be 29y. I'm so sorry. Um, if I add 90 and 26 together, I think I get 116. Is that right? If I divide out each side by 29, what's 116 divided by 29? 4? Is that what someone said? Sweet. So I divide both sides by that, I get y is equal to 4. So my y component is 4. I need to plug that y component either in here or here. So I'll plug it in the top one so I can get 2x plus 3 times 4, which is 12, is equal to 18. 2x is equal to 6. x equals 3. Let's ask this question. Are these parallel lines if we had graphed them? No. Why, right? That's a point, and if that's a point, then they intersect at a point, and we know parallel lines from geometry aren't going to intersect, right? So again, if we got something goofy. All right, problem number three. Problem number three. Gabe, we're just going to multiply. So this is like what we did yesterday. So what would my first step on number three be? And it's on your, same on your back side of that paper if you can't see. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to multiply 2x here, 2x there. What's 2x times 3x, Gabe? 6x? No, it's, it is 6x, but 6x what? Because x times x is what? x squared, right? So I get 6x squared. And then 2x times negative 2 is what? Gabe? x. Good, I love it. All right. Andrew, uh, 3 times 3x is? 9x. And then Andrew, 3 times negative 2 is? Negative 6. Andrew, do I have any like terms right now? What is that? There we go. Both of those. So I get 6x squared plus 5x minus 6. Ashley, is it in standard form? Yep, it's descending order. Good. All right, Ashley, you're going to lead us through starting on number 4. What's my first step on number 4 to do? So, good. Yes. Perfect. I love it. 
Angelo, help me out. What am I going to do with this negative 1? What am I going to do with the negative 1? Times it. Yeah, thank you. What's negative 1 times neg or 2x squared? So negative 2x squared. I love it. What's negative 1 times 6x? Negative 6x. I love it. Now I just ran out of room, so I'm just kind of lining them up. And what's negative 1 times negative 2? Giddy up. And being I lined them up now, I lined them up with the appropriate stuff. So 2x to the third comes down. Uh, let's see. Reese, what is 6x squared minus 2x squared? What is 6x squared minus 2x squared? 4, 4x. Okay, good. Plus 4x squared. I love it. Reese, what is negative 2x plus negative 6x? Negative 8x, and then the plus 2 just comes along for a ride. Reese, by looking at this, does it look like it's in standard form, and how do you know? Yes, because the higher number is the Love it. It is in standard form because it goes to x to the third, x to the second, x, and then x to the zero, which is the same thing as 2x. Or it's just going to be 2. Feeling okay about this? So that was kind of yesterday stuff, right? All right, so we're, we're scrolling down your page a little bit on that back side. So we're working with quadratics, multiplying polynomials, and there's a special case. I can multiply polynomial, including the difference of squares pattern, leaving the answer in standard, standard form. Okay, so we're that's our target we're going to go to. We're going to see that there every now and then there might be two binomials, which is a two terms and two terms. They're multiplied together, but we're going to go to something called the difference of two squares. And the difference of two squares always comes back in math classes from here all the way through Calc 3. Okay, it probably even comes beyond that as well. But it's something that kind of always kicks back in. It's to go back to, make it work, realize it happens. So this is a skill that could be used in later and later math classes. And I know some of you are saying, well, I ain't ever taken any math in college. I, okay, I get you. But you never know what you might do. I had no idea I was going to be a math teacher when I was sitting in your spot. I thought I was going to be an orthodontist. Want to know why? My orthodontist drove a cool car. That was my only justification. It wasn't that, oh, I wanted to figure out how to move teeth around someone's mouth. No. Orthodontist had a cool car. All right. Mac. Mac, I want you to work that problem out on your paper real quick. So that's Mac. Selena, I want you to work that one out real quick. Garvey, I want you to work this one out real quick. Christian, I want you to work this one out real quick. Megan, I want you to work this one out real quick. And TJ, I'd like you to work this one out real quick. Okay. So I'll give you a couple seconds to figure it out. You can ask your neighbors if you're you kind of lost track of it. Well, let's figure this out. Now, for the rest of you, while they're working those out, I want you to look at those. Each and every one of those, the 2x and the 1, the 2x and the 1, the 3x and the 5, the 3x and the 5, the y and the 2, the y and the 2, the a and the 4, the a and the 4, the 4x and the 7, the 4x and the 7, and the 2z and the 6, and the 2z and the 6. Do you see that I have positive and negative? I have alternate signs between the binomials, but they're the same letters and number combinations. Does everyone see that? Mac, how are we doing? Okay, so Mac, I want you to double check me. Do you agree with that so far? Cool. So what happens here, Mac? Uh, they cancel. Yeah, and I wind up with this. Is that okay? Yeah. Celine, I want you to double check my work. You ready? All right, so I got Is 
that what you got so far? Okay. What happens here? So I get 9x squared minus 25, right? Cool. Garvey, check my work, would you? Agree? Cool. What happens here? Yeah, and if they go together, what happens to them? They're gone, right? Cool. So I get y squared minus 4. Okay. Christian, check my work for me. Agree with that so far? Cool. What happens with positive 4a and negative 4a? They're gone, right? They cancel each other out. So I get a squared minus 16. Okay. Megan, double check my work, please. that okay so far? What happens to the positive 28x and the minus 28x? They're gone. So I get this. Cool. TJ, will you double check my work? So I got to bring it down here a little bit. So I get 4z squared uh, minus 12z plus 12z minus 36. What happens here? Cancel out. Any observations that are taking place on these types of problems? What cancels? The middle, right? Okay. What else do you notice about each one of these problems up there as far as the answer? What's the sign in the middle between the two? Minus. Minus. Okay. So I have 4x squared minus 1, I have 9x squared minus 25, I have y squared minus 4, I have a squared minus 16, I have 16x squared minus 49, and I have 4z squared minus 36. Um, let's look to the last term. What do you know about the number 1, the number 25, the number 4, the number 16, the number 49, and the number 36? They are perfect squares. Love it. Now. 4x squared is the same thing as 2x times 2x. Agree? 4x squared is the same thing as 2x times 2x. Do you agree? What about 9x squared? That's the same thing as what times what? 3x and 3x. Good. What is y squared the same thing as? y times y. What is a squared the same thing as? a and a. What's 16x squared the same thing as? 4x times 4x. And 4z squared is the same thing as? 2z times 2z, okay? So the first part is also a perfect square, okay? I need to do Um. So these are called the difference of two squares. What does the word difference mean in math? Difference mean in math? Subtraction. So the difference of two squares. This is a perfect square as well as this. Difference of two squares. This is a perfect square as well as this. Subtraction. Difference of two squares. This is a perfect square as well as this. Difference of two squares. This is a perfect square as well as this with a subtraction. Difference of two squares. Perfect square. Perfect square with a subtraction. Difference of two squares. Perfect square, perfect square, difference of two squares. So there's a little pattern that takes place. So if you have two binomials, which everything in one and everything in the other are the same, and you have one sign that is different, meaning positive and negative, you have one sign that's uh, opposite, it's called the difference of two squares, which means if you multiply it together, your middle stuff is going to fall out. And you're going to have a perfect square as your front end, and a perfect square as your back end, with a subtraction sign in between. It's called the difference of two squares. And guys and girls, I can tell you, this is one of those things, when I say that it will show up over and over and over again, it is a gotcha thing that shows up, especially later when we start getting into something called factoring. Okay? Now, factoring is a great puzzle, and that's all it is, is a great puzzle. 
But it's one of those things, it really isn't hard. I, and I, got, I have a way of making it through. I think you guys are going to like it. It's, it's genuinely a good thing, I, I, I truly feel. Okay, if you get factoring down, which I'm pretty confident you guys will get a pretty good feel of it, the next math classes you take are a breeze. Because they're like, okay, how do these factor? Oh, I know this. And you got it. It's, again, a puzzle that we're undoing something. We're undoing what these are. Okay? May I move on? Okay. What did we notice? Stephen, what did you notice on those? They're all minuses. I like it. Preston, what else did you notice on them? They're all subtraction signs in between. What did you know about the first and the last term? Guaranteed. Are perfect squares. Love it. Okay? Bo, there's only two terms. The first term and the last term when you do the multiplication of them, which gives you perfect squares with a minus sign. So that's when the difference of two squares comes in, okay? It's called the difference of, of squares, pattern. Okay? A minus B, A plus B. I have... A and B on both of the equations being the same. A can represent whatever you want. B can represent whatever you want. A will be the same in both of the equa or both of the binomials, and B will, and I will have alternating signs. If I have alternating signs, the shortcut is here. If you notice, oh, that and that look the same, except I have a subtraction sign between the two, no matter what, if they're the exact same, if A and B are the same, in the first spot, so the first spot here, this could be 7x, this could be 7x, 30x, 30x, 50x squared, 50x squared, 2,000xy, 2,000xy. Your b's also are the same. You're separated by that. If you notice that, you're just going to, oh, well, a times a is a squared. b times b is b squared, separated by a subtraction sign each and every time. So there's no reason to go through the entire thing with all of the multiplications. If you have identified that I have my first spot in each equation is the exact same term. My second spot in each equation is the exact same term. And between the two is either plus, minus, or minus, plus. Every time it's going to work for you. OK? Feeling OK? George, with that information I just told you, I just want you to think about this. And this is going to everybody, too, but I'm picking on George now. I have 3x and 3x. That's the same in both the first spots of those equations, correct? I have a 2, I have a 2. That's the same in the second spot of both of those. And I have alternating signs. Do you agree? Okay? So the answer is 3x times 3x is? Perfect. 9x squared. And then 2 times 2 is? 4. And it's called the difference of two squares. So what sign needs to be in between? Minus. Difference means subtraction. That's all it is. It's going to work each and every time. Good job, George. Mackenzie, same thing. I have a 10A, I have a 10A. First, same in the both first spots, right? I have an 8 and an 8, same in the both first spots, right? They are alternating signs, positive and negative. So ready? What is 10, 10A times 10A? 100 to the second, A squared. And what is 8 times 8? And what is the sign always going to have to be? Negative. Negative. Again, this is the difference of two squares. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. It's the difference of two squares. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. We have now come to the end. Do we have questions that we have about this operation? OK. I want to give you the opportunity. Page three and four of the packet are due Monday. Okay? Now, on Schoology, I have that three-question quiz worth 30 points, but it only got, counts as 10 points in the book, which somebody in this class got a 10 out of 30 on. Means you missed two of them? 
So if that happens to be you, I am going to hit reset on yours and allow you to redo it if you were the 10 out of 30. Not saying names, Angelo. Um, oh, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was Angelo. He got a 0 out of 30. It's really funny. I'm just kidding. All right, so this quiz is due by tonight. Due by tonight at 11.59 p.m. You have many days to do it. It's three questions. It's easy. In fact, the video two days back has it done for you. Cool? You know what to do? You feel good about it? All right. Yes, sir. This is the homework.